Okay, I want to show you how I use JavaScript to make this page work. This is a randomizer. So I'm working on a team for this event, and we needed a way to pick a random winner, actually many random winners, out of a list of people who've taken a survey. So what this does is the user will upload a CSV file with all the names of the people, and I just have this one as a sample one. And once it's uploaded, you can click next winner and it'll show the winner. It'll also store them down here and it's this person can no longer win after they've been chosen once. And so you can continue to get as many winners as needed and it will keep track of the previous winners and it also lets you reset the page and start over. So I'm going to show you how I used JavaScript to do this. The HTML is just pretty basic with Bootstrap so I'm not going to go over that at all. So you can just assume that that's all in place as we work through this uh, JavaScript. So, um, I found help on this uh, reading the file from this link that reading CSV file with JavaScript and HTML5 file API. So I used a lot of their code and then I modified it to make it work for what I needed it to do. But I just wanted to reference that and you can see the link up here if you want to go and read it as well. But let's dive into the code. So, like I said before, the HTML and the CSS is already all set up, along with the appropriate IDs and whatnot that we'll need to refer to in this JavaScript file. The only methods that I have written right now are the open and close modals, which are used for some error handling. And I've just written out the names of this, the functions that we'll need throughout this, so we'll fill them in as we go. So, what we're going to start is handle files. So Handle files is the method that is going to make sure that the browser supports file reader before continuing on with the logic. So where it's just a simple if statement, we're going to say if window dot file reader that'll come as true or false, and if it's true, we want to move on to the next method, which is going to be get as text, and we're going to pass. Um, the first file that is uploaded. Only one can be uploaded on my site, but this code should allow you to have an array of files and then just pass one at a time. So we're going to call get as text. Then I'm also going to add this flag just for my own sake, just to see if a file's been uploaded so that other logic doesn't try to happen before the file is completely uploaded. So if it's not supported, we want to show an alert to the user or just to the console saying file reader not supported in browser. Pretty simple. I haven't encountered this yet so I don't know which browsers don't support file readers but there might be some out there so this is important to include. So we already referred to get as text so now let's move on to that to continue on with the logic because now that file reader is supported we can start trying to convert it into text and then read it. So this get as text, we're going to start by creating a new instance of file reader. So we're going to call it reader equals new file reader. And file reader is a built-in API to JavaScript. So you can look up their site. I can show it to you real quick. This is some information about it. And it talks about the constructor and then the different properties. And we'll talk about some of these as we go, especially the on error and the on load. Um, but the one that we're about to read or about to use is file reader dot read as text. So this is what we're going to use to uh, transfer the CSV into a text. So now that we have a new instance of the file reader, we're going to say reader dot read as text, which is what we were just looking at, and then we want to pass the file to that method. And then here we're also going to want to call the onload and the on error uh, built in functions. So reader.onload. So this is what we set here is what's going to be triggered each time the reading operation is successfully completed. The on error will be triggered each time the reading operation encounters an error. So we're going to have to create new methods for this as well. So we're going to call this onload handler. Let's do reader dot on error equals error error handler. Okay, so now let's jump over uh, to that real quick. 
So we want to go to load handler. That's going to be right down here. <clears throat> so we're going to say let CSV. So I'm just going to create a new variable. This gets an event by default. And I'm going to do event dot target dot result. So it's going to do what it needs to process. And then we're going to send it to our next step, which is process data. So this will make sure that the file is in the proper format and able to be, it's, it's compatible with this um, functionality. So that's the load handler. Um, we're going to skip the error handler for now because it's, oh, actually, it is right up here. I do have it. Or maybe I don't. Okay, we'll create a new one real quick. So we want to do function error handler, and it's going to receive an event by default. And we're going to say if event.target.error.name, and this is all built in as equivalent to uh, not readable error. I think I just spelled that right. Yeah. And what we want it to do is set an alert that just says cannot read file. Again, I haven't played with too many data types, so I don't know what data types will trigger this, but it is important to hold this just in case. Okay, so now if you remember back with our load handler, we created this process data and we're going to pass it this result that the load handler uh, came up with. So now let's go write the code for process data. So I'll write down here. So this one is probably the most complicated little piece of code. It's got some nested fours, so it can get kind of hard to read what's going on. So what we first need to do is we need to split the text string so that it can read it properly. And we want to split it on carriage returns and new lines and then put it into an array. So let's say let all text lines equals csv.split. So let's split this long string that we have right now. And we want to do it on carriage returns, new lines, or new lines. So that now creates a, an array for us to use. So now we need to iterate for, through the array to make sure that the data gets stored properly. So we're going to write a for loop. And this first one is going to deal with each row of data. So we're going to start with the iteration at 0. Say as long as i is less than all text lines dot length. And then it'll auto increment. So every time this happens, we want to create a new variable. So let's say, let's actually call this row. So let row equal all text lines and then index of i. And now we need to split this on a semicolon because CSVs will separate the columns of data with semicolons. So now we want to have many different pieces of data for each thing. So, so we're gonna let the data array equal that, or sorry, the row array equal that. And now we want to create a new array that we're going to use for this next four. So it's we're gonna do we're gonna call it call for column. We're just gonna set it as an empty array so that every time this iterates through it also gets reset. So now this inner for loop, let's let j equals zero as long as j is less than the row dot length. And then j plus plus. So now this is going to go through each column of data and store it separately. So we're going to do call dot push and it's going to be row index of 
j. So this will create an array within that array that will uh, essentially make a like three-dimensional data type here. But now I have my own array called attendees array that was declared at the, at the top as a global variable that I want to push each of these to. So I want to do attendees array dot push and I want to push this column to it this column array so this one you can kind of get confused with and it's easy to get lost in nested for loops so but and that's pretty much it all you need to do for the JavaScript side to do this but now let's work on the more of the HTML side to get that to work and the logic of picking a random winner so let's start with randomize winner so the first thing if you remember we used the uh, file uploaded tag from before this is where I want to use it so I want to say if a file is not uploaded then what I want to do is I actually want to open an error modal and I already have the HTML written for this and this method so this is going to open the modal and we want to say we want it to be the error modal okay so in this error modal just says that you haven't uploaded a file so you need to upload a file before you can use it so next case is if there's nothing in the array so if they upload an empty file for example, we want to be able to handle that so it doesn't just give us an undefined answer every time we try and come up with a new winner. So it's attendees array dot length I'm going to say equals zero. Then we want to open another modal, and this one is called empty list. So and then if neither of those are true, then it should be working. So in the else we want to do, we want to use the JavaScript uh, random function. If you know, if you look at it, it's kind of funny compared to some other languages. It looks something like this because we're going to have two values. We're going to have the minimum and the maximum index. So this is what we're going to use over here. So we're going to say let min equal zero because the smallest index can be zero, and let max equal attendees array dot length and then I'm going to say let winner index equal math dot floor this is what I just showed you on the other page math dot random oh, that parenthesis didn't work math dot random oh, lowercase times max minus min plus one this allows it to be inclusive of the values that we give it um, and there we go so that's what JavaScript has built into it and then we also want to keep track of the current winner so that we can display their name so attendees array the winner index and then we want to call the display winner method. So now let's go up to the display winner method and just it's as simple as changing the HTML to match what is uh what is the winner's name. So we're gonna say um, this ID is winner's name in the HTML. We're gonna say dot HTML and just pass it the current winner because that's a global variable so we didn't have to pass it into this method so there's a couple other things you can also do you can remove this winner from the list or you know keep track of the list at the bottom so I didn't go over that too much but I'm sure you'd be able to figure it out where you just remove that index you splice it and then for showing all the winners you would have to write some HTML in the JavaScript to populate that below so 